Greetings fellow YouTubers. Today we're going to show you how to enter track break information by hand. Uh, you might have to do this if you can't find a listing online. It's rare but for, well it's only for classical music, um, often there isn't such a listing so then you do have to do it. Uh, we'll also show you how to enter the track names and uh, we'll show you how to fade tracks in and out and one or two other things that are in the same general area that are not covered by the other videos we've posted. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, here's a recording that uh, we made previously, uh, Beatles Sergeant Pepper. Now, you would of course find that online, but we're going to do it manually by way of example. And you can see that we're in the split tracks window. And down here is a waveform display showing you roughly the uh, audio levels and you can already see where the track bait markers are likely to go in that display. Okay so this actually looks like a likely place so if I zoom in I'm doing this with the mouse wheel you can see that there's a a dip in the audio there and we, we can uh, play that uh, I hope you can hear this on the video let's do that alright so that was the end of track 1 and the start of track 2 and you can actually hear that they segue into each other um, and to deal with that uh, the best way is often to use a fade now, just for the moment, I'm just going to put a track break in there. So I position the cursor where I want the track break. And uh, I can just press B, the B key on the keyboard. And there is the track break. OK, I'm going to zoom out again. Sorry, I think that was an email coming in. Uh, what Vinyl Studio has done here is it's put a red end of track marker at the end of track one. And it's also put a green start of track marker at the start of track one. But that start of track marker is actually right at the beginning of the recording and there will normally be a needle drop and some lead in surface noise and you want to get rid of that. So I'm going to do that now. Click on the break, click on the track break marker, we'll put the cursor there. Zoom in a bit. Now I'm going to play the audio again, so listen up. So there's the needle break and whatnot, and the audio starts about here. Alright, so I'm going to move this green marker to about there, looks about right. Here's a crosshatch showing that that audio will be uh, omitted when you finally get around to saving your tracks. Um, and now if I play from the marker, let's see what we get. Okay, good enough. So you've seen a couple of things there. Uh, putting a marker in manually and adjusting a marker to get the best results. And also you've seen that zooming in and out is uh, an important skill. I'm doing it with the mouse wheel. You can also do it with the plus and minus keys, um, whichever suits you best. Having a mouse wheel is a big plus. Right, so we said here we might need a fade, and indeed we will. But just for the moment I'm going to move on to what looks like the next track break. So there we are, zoom in. And you can see the track, the first track, no, the second track, sorry, fading out. And then the third track fading in. So let's listen to that. <laughs> Okay, so that one ended about there. Uh, you can also insert a marker with a double click, which is what I just did. And now, if we look back, there's a green marker at the end of track one, and a red marker at the end of track two. And that's how you do it. You work through the tracks one at a time, putting the markers in, until you've done them all. So I'm just going to whip through now and put in a few more. 
I'm just going to put them roughly in the right place. I hope you can follow what I'm doing here. As I say, when you zoom in, you, you get a pretty clear idea of where the markers need to go. And I'm just going to go up to the end of side one. You can see that uh, this was recorded as the two, two the two album sides. Sorry, were recorded as two separate files. Um, this was done a long time ago. This recording, when Vinyl Studio, that was the only option it had. More recently, you can record the whole thing as one file if you want, uh, which has some advantages when it comes to audio cleanup. Uh, when you're splitting tracks, it doesn't actually make any difference. Vinyl Studio just shows this grey dotted line here as a courtesy to let you know where side one ends and side two begins. Right, so let's zoom right out. There's a button for that. Zoom out all the way. And there are all our track breaks. So far, so good. Uh, now what I'm going to show you is how you can refine those to get the best results. So let's start with the fade because it was a customer asking how to do that that uh, drove us to post this video. So again, I'm just going to play the audio either side of the uh, marker and Vinyl Studio has a convenient shortcut. If you put the cursor on the marker or place of interest and then press the one key, it will play one second of audio either side of where the cursor is. So uh, I'm going to do that now as again, please, uh, uh, once again, please pay attention here. Okay, here we go. Okay, maybe that's a bit short. Another thing you can do is define a selection by clicking and dragging. You see the yellow marker there, and then we have here play selection. Okay, that's more like it. So now what I'm going to do is put in a, a crossfade between the end of track one and the start of track two. Now there are a variety of ways of doing this, but the easiest way is to hold down the Alt key. Uh, on the Mac that would be the Option key. <coughs> and when you do that, this happens. Do you see a little square blob has appeared on the marker itself? And you can drag that to create the fade, and that's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to drag that now. So that's fade out. And you might not it might not be easy to see on the video, but the the uh, square blob has now changed to green, and if I drag that, that's the fade in. So the net effect of doing that is that track one will be faded out, and track two will be faded in. Uh, so you can hear the effects of that immediately if I click on track one and play it. Let's go back a little bit. Right, listen to the fade. What would you okay, it faded out fairly quickly. I think I need a longer fade there. And then track two started playing. Uh, now, I can make life easier on myself uh, by using an option, sorry, in the cursor menu. So it's options, cursor options and playback speed, stop at end of track. This is a useful little trick. So I'm going to enable that. Okay, I'm going to lengthen the fade a bit, the fade no, wrong one, sorry. I'm going, to, well, I'm going to lengthen them both. I'm going to lengthen the fade out. I'm going to lengthen the fade in off track two. I'm going to bring this all back a bit. Where do I want it? Round about there, I think. Right, let's see how track one sounds now with that fade out and stopping at the end of the track because that's what you will hear when you save your tracks if uh, if you understand what I'm trying to get out here anyway let's hear what it sounds like all right 
So that's that sounds pretty good. That's track one fading out, and now let's hear track two fading in. What would you think? So there you have it. That's not a bad result. That's the kind of thing you want to use a crossfade for when a track when one track just runs into the next one. Uh, you'd use it on live recordings um, where there's applause in the middle. You want to fade that in and out. You don't want to abruptly cut it off or abruptly cut in. Um, and it's useful also for something like Abbey Road, where the Beatles just recorded the whole thing as one long piece with no actual breaks. So again, fading it in and out, it sounds much better. The final result sounds much better when you save your tracks. OK, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, one other thing that people do seem to struggle with sometimes is eliminating the dead air between tracks. And I think we can show that here. I'm going to move up to the next track break. Click. I'm going to zoom in. And it looks like there's some dead air here between the end of track one, uh, what is that, the end of track two and the start of track three. So let's just have a listen. OK, so between roughly between where the marker is and where the cursor is, we'd like to get rid of that. Otherwise, when you play track three, there will be a, a couple of seconds of silence before it starts, and it would be nice to get rid of that. And that's easy to do. The red marker is already in pretty much the right place. I hope you heard that. The green marker needs to be moved, so I can click on that if I click up top there drag it to about say there. So now again the, the dead air has been removed and Vinyl Studio is showing you that. So track 3 now sounds like this. And that's a big improvement. Uh, if you didn't get that first time just uh, rewind the video a bit, watch it again. It's actually very straightforward once you get the hang of it. OK, now just to finish up, I'll show you how you can edit track names in. When you save your files, you don't want them called track 1, track 2, track 3 and so forth. You want them to have meaningful names. And that's easy enough to do. So click on the first one like that. And then come over here, edit track details. And then you can type the name in. So the name of the first track on this album is this. Sorry, my lonely, my lousy typing. Okay, oh, to use. Sorry. Okay, so there we are. There's the track title in. That's probably all you're going to want normally. Uh, and then to put the next one in, you can come down here and you see this chevron pointing to the right. Click that. Now we're on track two with a little help from my friend. It's a good track, isn't it? Move on to track three. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Of course, they deny that that's anything to do with drugs, but then they would, wouldn't they? And so on. So you just go through and put them all in. If that is, you weren't able to find the listing online. OK, I think that's it. Any questions, post them in the comments or uh, drop us a line on our website. We have a contact page there. I'll put that into the description of the video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.